Hey, thanks for joining me today. And my name is Bonnie Lewis. I am here to teach you the common sewing tips, how to sew with a sewing machine. Just to give you a tiny bit about me, I am the designer and the founder of Common Sewing's New Basics Beginner Series, a six project series designed to teach you all the skills you need to make everything you want. So most of you are here today because you're in that series, but if you're just passing through and you want to know a little bit more than just um, how to make your sewing machine work, I am a fashion industry professional. I'm a tailor on photo shoots. I've been gathering the skills that I believe everyone needs to sew anything they want for years on the road with global fashion brands. And I'm bringing them to you in my six project New, Baser, New Basics Beginners Sewing Series. So I hope that you check it out and join me. And if you're already here to learn, let's get familiar with our sewing machine. All right. I know this is a bit of an odd angle, but I want you to look at the sewing machine like um, you're looking at your sewing machine. So here we are. This is my sewing machine. To start sewing, I need a good working sewing machine. I need my spool of thread. You know I love Guterman. I need my bobbin that's designed for my sewing machine scissors and or snips. I also like to keep on hand a bucket for my little snips of threads and all those little messy things. And as a tailor, I always bring with me an extension cord because I always wanna be in the best light and I wanna be at the best place on the table to sew. Okay, so we are going to begin. I want you to have the manual printed out for your sewing machine, all right? So if you don't already have that, put me on pause and go print out the manual for your sewing machine because all sewing machines are pretty much the same, but they all have specific little differences. All right, so first things first, I found my plug, which attaches to my foot pedal. I put my plug in, I turn my machine on. When I see my machine is on, I see a light goes on. So um, if your light doesn't go on, it's okay. It just means that your light bulb is burned out and you can get that replaced at any sewing machine shop. Okay, easy enough. Um, all right, so let's practice something with our hand out of the way. Oh, definitely with your hand out of the way. Let's put your foot onto that foot pedal and I want you to look at three things very carefully. All right, so you saw that your needle went up and down, but also your thread uptake lever went up and down and look to the right your hand wheel is turning. So whenever you're sewing, all of those things are happening at the same time. Um, so let's get to know the parts of our sewing machine. You have your hand wheel. Your hand wheel is possibly the most important part of your sewing machine to make sure you are respecting. If you ever turn your hand wheel away from you, I guarantee you, you will jam up your thread and as a beginning sewer, you will think you don't know how to sew. It's not true. It's that your sewing machine is designed for the hand wheel to turn towards you. So one of the rules that we have in common sewing is always turn your hand wheel towards you. It is your friend. Always bring your friends towards you. Now notice your needle is going up and down. So when you're sewing, you can use your hand needle or your hand wheel to sew just as though you were using your foot pedal. It just gives you a little bit more control and goes slower. But you guys remember, hand wheel always comes towards you because it's your friend. The second thing I want you to remember about your sewing machine is the reverse button. Every time you start a stitch or stop a stitch, you are gonna go three stitches forward and three stitches back. And the way that you go three stitches back is with your reverse button. Even if you were sewing with your hand wheel, even if you're hand stitching, if you want to go backwards, you never turn this away. You'll jam your thread up and you'll get very frustrated. So always turn your hand wheel towards you. And if you want to go backwards, push the reverse button. Okay. These are some fun parts. This is your stitch length dial. A number four, a big stitch means a big loose stitch. A number one is a tiny stitch, a very tight stitch. On most of our projects, we'll stitch with number three, but we'll change that in certain projects. Um, our stitch selector gives you all these fun stitches, and some of you are gonna have hundreds of stitches. You'll be able to embroider things and ducks in your name. Uh, play with that, have a great time with that. I used to love to make decorative trims. 
Um, your tension dial, uh, mine is a little bit off right now actually. My tension dial is normally gonna be set to number four. 80% of the time you were gonna have your tension dial set to number four. In our new basics, number five, the GG Knit Tee, we will play with a lot of setting and resetting the thread tension and you'll really get to see how that changes your sewing experience. Your presser foot, okay. This is one of the most important parts of sewing. Anytime you sew, your presser foot must be down. Now, this is the presser foot. The presser foot is the foot that holds your fabric down and pushes it down so that the feed dogs under it, under it can push the fabric through. That's how the machine works. So find your presser foot and find your presser foot lifter and play with that for a minute. All right, now let's also look at how you release your presser foot. Most new machines have a release lever on the back of the shank that holds the foot in place. So please go ahead and release your presser foot. Here's your little foot. This is my straight stitch foot. We've got multiple feet. In number two, the zipper clutch, we are gonna play a lot with replacing the foot. And you'll get very used to that in project basic number two. So go ahead, when you put your presser foot down onto your special foot, you'll see you have a bar on the foot and you'll see on your shank, you've got a little half moon opening. I need that little half moon to lower right down on that shank and it'll click in place and raise back up. I would like you to refer to your manual. I would like you to pause me and I would like you to do that 10 times until you're used to it because it's an important part of learning to sew is getting your hands used to all this stuff. Okay, a needle. We always have to have a needle in our sewing machine to sew. And in the new basic series, we are gonna learn a lot about replacing needles and changing needles in basic number five, the GG Knit Tee. All right, so here's my needle. Now here's my little needle screw. I want you to hold your needle with your left hand and screw the screw towards you with your right hand. Do not unscrew it all the way, it's hard to get back on. But your needle's designed to come out. And notice, the front of your needle is rounded and the flat is in the back. You always want the flat to the back. So I want you to put that needle back into the little hole it came out of. And once it's there, you'll know if you have it in enough, yeah, you can't push it any farther. So screw that screw back on completely and you have your needle in place. You're gonna change needles all the time. Different needles uh, are necessary for different types of fabrics. But don't worry about that because we're gonna go over that a lot in your six basic workshop series. All right, let's go ahead and thread this machine. Okay, I've got spool pins, mine go up and down. I need you to be looking at your manual because remember, every machine's a little different. Yours might go sideways. So you wanna find out how you wanna put the thread on the spool pin. Mine wants to go straight onto the spool pin with the thread oriented to the back. Okay, so here's a little cheat for threading anything always snip your thread so that you have a new crisp edge to your thread. Now, in the blog, you know I showed you this very carefully in pictures. You want your, your thread to go through the center out here, up. I wanna hold that little thread tail in place. And if you're just visiting and you wanna know what's up with this blog, go to Common Sewing, go to the blog and go to common sewing tips, how to use a sewing machine. And this will all be in there in written form. So now I'm gonna hold that thread tail here and I'm gonna wind this manually about 15 times. Okay, so now that that's done, I am going to, with the thread to the back, when I wind my bobbin, when you make your first mistake doing this, you will know. You have your little bobbin winding spindle here. It's the smaller of the two pins, the bobbin winding pin. And click it, <clears throat> click it in and out a few times. To put your bobbin on it, you want it clicked to the left, place your bobbin on. And then to tell your sewing machine it's time to sew, click your bobbin to the right. But double check with your manual. Everybody's machine's a little different. This is my bobbin winding uh, dial. So I am going to slip my thread right in here between this these two discs, but once again, refer to your manual because every machine is a little tiny bit different. Okay, so I've got my thread coming from my thread, thread pin through this bobbin winding guide over to my bobbin winding pin. 
and I've popped my bobbin pin to the right. I know you can't see that, but you'll do it and you can follow it in your instructions. And then I pop my hand wheel to the right. And I have just told my sewing machine that it's time to wind a bobbin. Now, I'm gonna put my foot on the presser foot and look, pause me and do this yourself. It's really fun. Watch how it winds. The machine is designed to give it an even wind, all right? So that's fun. And you can't really see that up close, but when you do it yourself, you've seen that the, the, the guide has been guiding the thread up and down to wind evenly on the bobbin. It's really fun. Okay, so now to put everything back in place, I pop my hand wheel back in. It was out. This tells my machine bobbin winding. This tells my machine when I pop it back in, just pop it back in, uh, time to sew. I pop this pin, the bobbin winding pin, where the bobbin sits, over to the left. I can take my bobbin off. I can take the thread out of the bobbin threading guide and I can make a snip. Okay, I'm gonna set my bobbin aside for right now. Threading my machine, just watch me and um, you know, follow your manual for your sewing machine. But whenever I start to thread my machine, I make sure that the little thread uptake lever that goes up and down with my hand wheel is at the top position because I need that for threading. Okay, so step one, I go through this hook. Step two, down and around. Step three, up and through the piece. Step four, back behind that hook. Step five, behind that tiny hook. And then I always thread my needle. I always want my needle at the topmost position. And I thread my needle from the front to the back. Okay, so I like to always have my threads at three o'clock. It's just a standard rule that I have. So I've got my thread here. I take my extension table off, open this up, and now I've got my bobbin case. So I'm going to grab that lever, take it out, and what I did is I just grabbed, you saw there was a little lever on my bobbin case. Some of you are going to have different bobbins, so refer to your manual. Okay, so you can see here's the inside, and I've got the little hook, the thumb is up, and that orients with that little tiny slot here. I always, it's like a puzzle. So this wants to be up and it clicks right back in here. Now, oops, I forgot to snip my thread tail. Okay. With my thread oriented and in the scripting, it tells you which way to orient the thread tail so you can put this in properly. So this is up, thread tail looks like a Q. I just gently slide this in there. This is meant to move freely. So I go in, I go through this little tiny notch here under this tension disc. See my tension disc? And then I click right into that little notch right there. All right, so I pop that back in. Now the fun thing is I hold this with my left hand. With my right hand, I grab my, my uh, hand wheel and I gently lower my needle with the hand wheel turning towards me, one full rotation. And if you can see carefully, my thread is now sweeping across my bobbin. That's a very gentle, slow act of sewing. But when I'm almost done, when I've almost completed one full rotation, I grab this thread and I pull that bobbin thread to the top. It is necessary that your bobbin thread and your top thread are together, that they're between the foot and the needle plate, and I like to always have my threads off to three o'clock so I can start to sew. I close this, put my extension tape back on, and we're ready to sew. So I really hope that helped. And our next step is to jump over to the PDF you can download, Common Sewing Tips, How to Sew, and we're gonna learn how to stitch together. Um, please do check out Common Sewing's New Basics Beginner Series if you have not already. Um, it is six simple workshops that'll teach you everything you need to sew, and you'll do it with me, like my grandma taught me to sew. Um, and please follow us on Instagram at Common Sewing, on Facebook at Common Sewing, and subscribe to this channel for more uh, insider tips on how to sew beautifully. I hope we make lots of great things together.